remember the wave, according to that voice instructor. All right, very good. That's my reaction to your great answer, Tristan. Okay, moving on. Elise sits right up in the front and thinks she gets away with it. Who led America to a military victory at Lake Erie in 1813? Who led that victory? Is that right? No. <laughs> oh, it <might> be. <laughs> who is it? No. It's not Thomas McAdow. Who is it? Oliver Perry led the military victory in Lake Erie. Therefore, Maddie, who led the victory at Lake Champlain? Uh, uh -huh. Deja vu. The guy that she just said. Yeah, you got him in there? Somewhere. Somewhere. Yeah. Thomas McDonough. There you go. There you go. All right. All right, let's think about this now. We're near New Orleans, and General Andrew Jackson has just gathered up his manpower, not counting the 2,000 American troops that were supposed to be there to help him. And tell me one of the five branches of his manpower. Josh, what do you have with him there? 103 black slaves from Haiti. Very good. Okay, that's exactly right. Brady, give me another one of his five-prong attack there. Uh, if you have your notes open, kind of follow it. Really help me out. Oh, it's okay. Wait, whatever you think. So they have a hundred freed slaves from Haiti. Okay. What else they got? Uh, hundred men from New Orleans. Very good. Morgan, what else they got? What? How many? And how many and what type? <coughs> how many? A handful of Choctaw Indians. Hey Morgan, back at you. What else did he get? He had not a lot of them, just had one. Who was it? <laughs> Gene Lafitte, okay, and what did he supply Jackson with that he couldn't get from anywhere else? Cannonballs and gunpowder and what? Flints, very good, okay. Macklin, what else did he have? The last thing he had. Not going to do a very good fight with 200 guys. Oh, he had the militia. He had the Tennessee. Who else? Mississippi, Kentucky. and Kentucky militia with him. So, when I say near New Orleans, explain the manpower General Andrew Jackson had prior to his battle with British troops there, you're going to say 100 men from New Orleans, 100 free slaves from Haiti, Jean Lafitte, a pirate, a handful of Choctaw Indians, and militia from Tennessee, Mississippi, and Kentucky. There's your answer. Okay? Kasia, give me one of the four objectives of the Treaty of Ghent. Ghent, excuse me. Uh, uh, it was arranged for all prisoners of war to let go. Very good. Casey, give me another objective of the Treaty of Ghent. Uh, wait, what? One of the four objectives of the Treaty of Ghent. Uh, they settled boundaries of the U.S. and Very good. Sage, how about another one? No, no, you're, you're on a different thing. Oh. I'm talking about objectives. Oh, okay. Restore peace between the other. Very good. And uh, Josh, what was the fourth thing? Approved relations. Approved relations between? America and Britain. Very good. Okay. Other than shaping the foreign policy of the United States, Dalton, give me another reason the War of 1812 was a turning point in American history. Other than shaping the foreign policy of the United States. After the War of 1812, it became more independent from Europe. Very good. Dane, another one. 
Um, we gained much needed respect from European countries. So they believed we, we could, could stand, on our own. stand on our own two feet. And Olivia, what was the last thing? Um. <laughs> okay, so is it that we didn't, or we weren't directly involved in the European wars? For how long? 100 years. 100 years, very good. Okay. Let's see, Maddie, I think you can have this. Concerning American victory at New Orleans, explain the first and second assaults. Congreve rockets to the British, I mean to the... Okay, let's get it in order. So first they start out by... Shooting the Congreve rockets at the U.S. Hoping to... Like scare them away, like something they hadn't seen before. And they... Didn't, like, didn't affect the board at all. Oh, they thought they were... Pretty. Kind of pretty. When that failed, what'd they do next? Then they shot them. For how long? Three hours. And what happened? It ended in a stalemate. Very good. There's your first assault. Give me the second assault there, hey, uh, J.C. Page. Okay, so they brought in some bigger cannons. Okay. What kind of cannons? Uh, Where'd they get them? Uh, they just said abracadabra. Where'd they get these bigger cannons? From their what? Ships, which would mean they got them from their Navy. Very good. They brought in some Navy cannons, which were bigger. And what'd they do? They fired them at their fortifications, and um, the U.S. fired back, and they blew up their sugar barrels, but they got... Well, what the sugar barrels do? <laughs> they were, they were supposed to, they, that's what they were using to defend themselves. Okay, were sugar barrels from the plantations. And those cannons hit those sugar barrels? Yeah. And what happened? They exploded all over their cannons, and they dumped them up, so they didn't work. And so what'd they do? The... British quit what? They quit firing. Quit firing. The thing about the second assault that you have to remember is that the idea of the second assault was to bring in bigger Navy cannons, as JC said, and pound that fortification to try to destroy it. Okay? Well, we weren't going to sit there and take that continual pounding without response, so we fired our cannons. They were barricading themselves, the British, behind sugar barrels. And when our cannons hit their sugar barrels, it dispensed sugar all over the cannons, and when they that sugar melted, it got sticky and gummed up the cannons, and they quit firing. Very good. That's awesome. Hunter, tell me about the third assault. And now go in chronological order. So uh, then, then they decided to march straight at the fortification. Okay. And they first planned on putting ladders to get across the trench. Very good. Uh, put up a bunch of smoke. So then... Well, just a second. You're getting ahead of yourself. He's, so you started out right. They decided, with the cannon fire not doing any good, that they were going to do a forced march against the fortification. Mm -hmm. And you said that their initial plan was to not attack until those ladders were in place in the trenches. And when were they supposed to attack? What was going to happen that made them know they were going to attack? Very good. And once he shot that rocket, then the soldiers, the British soldiers were told to attack. Okay. Well, what did, what did uh, Jackson do while they were trying to get these ladders into the trenches and planning on attacking? Okay, hundreds per shot. And despite that, the British Continue to march toward waiting for that signal. Now go to your smoke. So then there was a bunch of smokes, and they see what's going on, so he fired the rocket. And then uh, Jackson ordered the sharpshooters to hold their fire until they were at the base of the point blank, and did it in 2000. Okay, well, let's get a little more specific. So he fired at point blank range, and they started to skedaddle, right, retreat. And when the smoke cleared, there, there was a sea of red from the many, many redcoats that were killed during the battle in less than an hour, by the way. That'd be important. And as a result of that, 2,000 British soldiers were either killed, wounded, or captured compared to the two dozen, right, that the Americans lost. Okay? All right. Now, I want to ask you a question. If you feel confident enough after this review that you want to take the test tomorrow, you can. Or we could spend tomorrow, which would be okay with me, making sure we get it. You want to do that? Have the test Wednesday? Yes. Okay. So tomorrow, bring your notes in. 
and we'll go through this whole thing again and make sure we're really confident and then we'll take that test Wednesday. How's that sound? Perfect. All righty. That was a good review. That might be the best one we ever had.